Hello there everyone, it's Maria with Angelfish Design and today I thought we would do a little craft with me as I make some embellishments for these three super cute mini fall journals. So I am working on um, a design team project for Ephemeris Vintage Garden. So I am using three of her kits and the one I'm going to be working with today is called Eleanor's Lady Eleanor's Journal and it is a really cute kit. It is a full journal kit so it has pages and uh, ephemera, embellishments, um, journal cards, all kinds of cute stuff. So I am also working on um, Dear Julie Julie's challenge for this month which is to do um, assembly line embellishment making or element making, that kind of thing. So that's why I'm making the three journals. And then we are supposed to make eight each of several different um, elements to put in the journals. So one of the elements I've already started working on is the shaker tags out of uh, a tag printable from a second kit that I used from Ephemeris Vintage Garden, which was Familiar Trees 2. So this came with a sheet of, I think it was six tags on it. So, and I'll have on my Instagram, I'm going to do um, a, a mini tutorial in my stories on how I made those tags. So if you're not on my Instagram, that link will be down below and you can go over there and check it out. But let's get going with uh, these embellishments. So again, supposed to make eight envelopes to put inside the journals. There's the envelopes. Here are all of my mini embellishments from the kit or mini ephemera that I've printed out and I have inked around all of these around the edges. I've used uh, two different colors. I used a lighter brown and then a darker brown over it just to give it some depth Okay, and then I have been seeing on so many people's Instagrams and YouTube channels these beautiful embossed papers that they are including uh, as either pages or embellishments and what have you. So I went through, I picked out some of my scraps um, and put them through my uh, Big Shot to emboss them and then put a bit of uh, ink over it just lightly brush some ink over that to make the embossing stand out a little bit and I think they just turned out gorgeous just some random scraps of scrapbooking paper and some uh, coffee filters it's just so pretty so I can't wait to use those and I'm trying to keep these embellishments kind of as flat as possible so we'll see how that turns out so Beyond that embellishing, we'll see what we get, what else we get. And then I've also done, I typed on the typewriter, I put this coffee dyed, um, it was a big, a large coin envelope. I put it into my typewriter and typed a bunch of fall uh, related, fall and forest related words. I always like to have um, a little word embellishment on there. I have several washi tapes that we could possibly use. I just put a small selection of things that I might possibly use on these to decorate. So these are some tags, or not tags, well these are tags. Um, these are also from the Lady Eleanor's Journal uh, kit, some tickets. I cut those out and inked around them. And then these are super cute. I have some of these, uh, I did a lot of punches with all of the little bits left over because I've been die cutting a lot. So, and I don't like to waste anything. So I have, I came, brought all those little bits of off cuts and leftover pieces so that I could punch those out and maybe use those. And then I also have some of these, it was a package of table scatter. So there are, I really like these little acorns. So I might use those for something in here. And then these are some leaves. And I used those 
I didn't use the acorns, but I used the leaf, one of the uh, oak leaves, and then there's a red maple leaf in there as well. So I like to limit the amount of supplies while I'm working on a given project because it just makes your assembly line work go a little quicker when you don't have to think that, oh, I need this supply, I gotta run and find it, or you know that sort of thing. So we'll work with what we have here on the table right now and see where we get with it. So what I was thinking was to do some layering of some of these uh, embossed papers with some of these really pretty um, mini journal cards ephemera so anything like that so that would be two elements and that's another requirement for dear julie julie's challenge is for each item that you are making you have to have three pieces of embellishment on top of that item so if we had this that would be one and then the card would be two and then we'd have to figure out what else we wanted to put on it if i wanted to put a word and leave it at that that would be three items and my piece would be done so I think that's the general idea of what we're going to do is put uh, the little embossed paper and then we'll see which cards you know, match the size wise. So maybe we'll do that. We'll put these out and figure out which, uh, which of the ephemera pieces we want to put with the different size envelopes. Let's move her up out of the way a little bit. All right, so that's eight, so I have nine. Okay, and they can go either direction. We can have them uh, landscape or we could do them portrait. It doesn't really matter. I guess it'll just depend on how the, how the embellishment is. Okay, I like this one, but I kind of want to use that for something else, so I'm gonna put that aside. And these two are very long pieces, so maybe for that one, that one. I just love these images that she has. This little girl, she just she she looks a little mischievous. I think that's my favorite one out of out of all of these. All right. And this one is a catalog cover, and it says spring. So we are definitely going to cover that up because we are not doing spring right now. We are doing fall. Hmm. All right, so maybe, so, oh wait, I think she is better on one of these. Do I want that one on there? Maybe I'd rather do him on there. Yeah. Okay, I think that looks good so far. Then we have this. Let me look at the smaller ones first so we can use those up right away, right? Okay, so I have this little guy. Hmm. Okay, he might be too small. All right, let's put him aside. I like this one. I'm just gonna tear these apart. And I might have to ink that kind of white edge there. Okay, and maybe so that I can get more out of this one, I am going to tear this in half. And then to give a nice contrast, uh, not enough contrast, maybe I'll put that for him. Whenever you're working on designing things like this, it's always just kind of a trial and error testing out all the pieces to see what looks good. Hmm. Now, I really like this pop over here of these red flowers, or I mean leaves. So I'm wondering if I want to layer that on one of these tickets instead of on this because I don't have anything, any of these papers that has that pretty pop. So we'll go with that for right now. <laughs> I like that orange, but I'm not really feeling it right now. Because again, I kind of want things to, to pop. And I feel like some of these just 
all very much blend together. You know what, maybe this will go nice with this because this kind of has a blue uh, tint to it and blue always looks nice with orange because those are complementary colors. Maybe, we'll leave that there for the moment. Although this has a little bit of orange. Did I already try this? Okay, I'm kind of feeling that. It's just a touch of orange to go with that. Do we like, oh, if I put this on there, I'm going to feel like it's Halloween. That's pretty, but, hmm. Okay, we'll come back to that one. This, I just, I think this one is super pretty. This was some of the children's book page that I, or children's writing page, I mean that I put through the embossing. And I think that turned out really pretty. I think she looked nice on that one. Hopefully I'm staying in frame here. I feel like this area is still in frame. Yeah. I think this kind of blends nicely into the background and still allows her to pop out. So let's tear that a little bit. Okay, so this is going semi-quickly so far. Okay, let's see what some of these bigger pieces are. If we want to use any of those. Hmm, that could be. This is a nice orange kind of color. Maybe I'll put green with this one. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Let's tear some of that up. All right, and as we can see, since there's not a whole lot of room on this envelope, we don't really even need this entire piece here because that's ended up being wasted because it's just underneath it. So what I will do with that then, I'll tear a little bit more of that off and then I can just put that there. And that's a great thing to remember if uh, you are new to junk journaling or crafting in general and you don't have a lot of supplies yet, that will definitely make your stash go further. Just be mindful of what's being hidden under another element because you may, you know, you may not need to waste that underneath something. All right, I think that green looked really nice with that, so I'm thinking maybe we're going to do that over here as well. This one's kind of small. I could layer a couple of different colors under there, so maybe I'll put that one and then something else. Oh, this doesn't have any more of the embossing on it, but that's all right. I still use it. Let's see if we like that. It's kind of fun. Hmm. Oh, how about down there? Oh yeah, maybe like that. Okay. And your odd shaped pieces of of scraps are kind of fun to use because then, you know, it just is, is very random how they end up sitting underneath, you know, when you're layering then. Because this has this interesting little cut shape from something or another that I cut out previously. All right, now it doesn't seem to want to sit the way I liked it. Okay. And if I'm not, if something isn't coming together quickly, then I may just, you know, leave it and come back to it in a few minutes. Once I find a different type of paper or something that looks good, I'll get a different idea and come back to it. So it's always fun to just go back and forth between them, see what you like and what works. Okay, so let's get that little bit off of there. In this case, I don't want the extra unusual uh, bit of scrap and in this instance I would not tear this extra bit because I do want this to come across and be underneath there whereas if I tore this off then it wouldn't 
go across the bottom and the top as as far and I do like that it extends like that so I'm gonna leave that one whereas with this one it's not coming up past the top or the bottom that's why I was okay with tearing that because you wouldn't see it anyway okay that one looks good that looks good all right we need this one that one he looks good probably running off the bottom of the screen sorry about that all right what do we like for her and this yellowy looking one how about will this look good with that one? Oh yeah I think so right yeah we'll go with that we'll try not to overthink we'll just try to be quick and get that there okay her I'm wondering if maybe some piece of this eh. It looks kind of dark, right? How about the orange? Ooh. With that little pop blue down there? Okay, I think we got a winner. And I got this little piece of white, so I'm just gonna tear that. It's a little fiddly to tear such a tiny amount off, but that's all right, because I don't want that little white bit showing there okay so I did like this little piece of blue here and then we'll put her and we want it to be about there okay yeah right oh and then we have this guy still hmm how about this Maybe we'll layer those. That's the same color, but this has the embossing on it. I really want to layer these, but they just, I can't seem to get them in, a, in an arrangement where I can see both of them and I actually like it. How about like that? Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, so I think we have all of those. All right, do I want to add a little stitching on this maybe? Because that's a nice uh, thing to add that doesn't add a lot of bulk. All right, so I think I'm going to do that. And I have put a line of some zigzag, zigzag stitching on each of these to hold the bit of ephemera and the scrap of paper in place. So we have those ready to go and in addition to that uh, while I was away I went ahead and put a tiny bit of inking on the edges of each of the envelopes and I made sure they weren't stuck together. So those are all ready to go. I cut out a few of the words from the envelope. Okay so let's see Falling leaves or fallen leaves might work with these eco dyed prints, so that would be good with that. Uh, that's kind of funny. I was thinking, <clears throat> what was I going to put with this young gentleman here? And he, he seems like the golden child, so golden seems good for that. Uh, we have thankful. I was trying to figure out which of these words that were really going to go with the images of people. We have woodland and vibrant. I think she's vibrant, right? <clears throat> we have this catalog. Looks like it's a Butterick pattern catalog, but again, it says spring. We could just put something in the middle of it. Put that little autumnal word there. Let's see, we have colorful, we have woodland. Let's see, we have this little baby. We have this lady who, that might be Lady Eleanor, right? Uh, vibrant, crisp, mushroom, no. Woodland, brisk, leaves, amber, amber. 
enchanting will make Lady Eleanor enchanting because I'm sure she is. Autumn Splendor. Oh, I like that with that birdie. Okay, we just need something for the baby. Is the baby a beauty? Maybe. I don't think the baby's blustery. Fall, vibrant, again, crisp. Hmm. Maybe the baby's thankful. Yeah, why not? We'll go with that. Okay, so we'll put those words with these different, but I like to have a little something in with the cluster. Do we want to use maybe the shiny leaves from the table scatter? Maybe that will work. Because that's more of what I was thinking was a slightly larger leaf to put with the word. Well, I think of this little bit of gold. Hmm. It has promise, but... Hmm. I do like that. That seems to go well, you know, with the whole golden theme. Do we want just the circle or a scallop circle? Might be too much. Yeah, I think just the regular circle. Okay, so we have that. So let's see when you're doing um, these kind of assembly line, you're taking the same idea and applying it to your, to all of your elements. So you don't have to keep thinking and making up new ideas. You just go with the same idea. So this particular idea is the word and then a small element to go with the word. So the element could either be this little scallop circle, little circle, the leaf, whatever that element is, it is an element and your word. And then we're layering that on top of the other pieces, which were all an embellishment or a piece of ephemera and a scrap of paper behind it. Or in this case, it was the ticket, but it's the same idea. And then you're applying that to all of your elements. So that makes it go a little quicker because once you know what you're doing, it's then easy to keep going with that. All right, you know, I think this one has enough color in it, so I'm going to go with one of these gold pieces. Yeah, that gives it just another little pop of neutral and maybe the same for our friend Lady Eleanor here. Mm -hmm. And all we have left is our thankful baby. Huh. What if we do one of these red ones? That's a lot of color. Oh, but I like it. I think it goes well with the 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 opposite color of the green there. For these little pieces, I'm going to use my tiny attacher. To go ahead and staple those together. So I think these are looking pretty good. The only thing really to do with them now is to glue everything down. 
because I think I think that's it. That's that's our design. Now, what, just one other thing that I wanted to mention before I glue those down is the orientation on the envelope. So for any of these that are a portrait, your flap can be on either side. Because what I do with this then is I put it over the edge of a page. So if your flap is on this side, this will end up overlapping this way. If the flap is on the other side, of course, it will end up overlapping that way. Now, of course, this is just what I do. You don't have to overlap your envelope on a page at all. You could just leave it. You could tuck it into a pocket, you know, anything like that. You could clip it onto the page without using the flap. You know, that's entirely up to you. That's a completely a personal preference or what you want to do with your journal. I will say with one that is a landscape, just make sure that your flap is on the top because while you could use this and maybe you want to put that at the bottom of your page, you know, overlap, it would just be kind of weird if you're looking at your envelope and your image is upside down. So that's the only one I would be mindful of. Okay, so our cute little envelopes are all completed, except for this one. I still am not feeling this. I really do want to cover up the word there where it says spring, but it's just not happening. So whatever, we'll put that one aside and at some point uh, I'll figure that one out. But we do have eight here, so we have completed that portion of the challenge for Dear Julie Julie's August Junk Journal Challenge. So we have our eight envelopes. So have the baby who is thankful. Now when I attach these, normally I would use my hot glue gun to put these down but since these are little metal pieces and with the uh, bit of staple I used a glue dot instead and then on this side uh, just used some of my Tombow Mono uh, to glue that down because I want to be sure that I'm not burning myself and the glue dot will hold pretty nicely there so we have that one we have our falling leaves, our vibrant young lady, our golden boy, the bird and the autumn splendor, the ever enchanting Lady Eleanor, some more fallen leaves, and then this one I forgot to do earlier. This was a postcard, telegraph postcard, so I put brisk. And I also added a little bit of washi down there because I felt like this section here needed a little something extra. So what we did today for folks who maybe feel a little challenged when they're layering, uh, break it down. So we did two pieces. We layered just our bit of ephemera and uh, some scraps of paper in the background. I had done my embossed paper to give it a little bit extra texture and then added some stitching. So that's three layers right there, but when you're just doing, you know, one or two layers and adding a little stitching, it doesn't seem overwhelming. Then we went in, we made a two part layer of a word and then something to help that word stand out from the rest of. The image so that was two more layers and then you put it on top and now suddenly you have done five layers on your envelope or your other embellishment whatever it is that you're making so so yeah so breaking it down into smaller chunks makes it more manageable stop by next time and we'll see what other embellishments we make for the pretty fall junk journals and thanks for stopping by. Thanks for staying here so long with me to work on these. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.